Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with grilled garlic and herb shrimp. That's right, don't let the generic name fool you. This is one of the finest grilled seafood recipes in all the land. And since we just showed you how to plant your own herb garden, I thought we'd post a video that really illustrates how awesome it is to have those fresh herbs around. So let's go ahead and get started with the marinade, where we'll be using four of those herbs. We're gonna go with some basil, some oregano, and I have two kinds, Greek and Italian. And we're also gonna do some Italian parsley and some lemon thyme. Oh man, is that stuff good on grilled seafood. And above and beyond the fresh herbs and garlic, one of the real secrets to this recipe is to use a mortar and pestle to make the marinade. And I'll go into detail about this amazing tool on the blog, but for now, let's just go ahead and prep these herbs for processing. And all that's gonna entail is taking the leaves off the stems, which is very easy for everything other than the thyme, which does take a minute or two to strip those little leaves off. And yes, when you first start your career as a prep cook in a kitchen, picking thyme leaves is one of the first jobs they give you because everybody hates to do it, but it really isn't that bad. And when you taste these, the effort will be well worth it. So we'll go ahead and we'll pick our herbs, at which point we can move on to making the rest of this mixture. So first up into the mortar, we're gonna place some kosher salt, followed by just a little bit of lemon zest, and then more than a little sliced garlic. That was about three cloves. And what we'll do before we add our herbs is give this a little crushing first. So we'll grab the pestle and we'll give this the old smasha smasha. And we don't really need to go too fine. We just wanna get this started. So go ahead and pound that until you have something that looks like this. And at this point we can add in our herbs, but not like this. Very critical, we're gonna have to cut them up a little bit first. Just start with the biggest basil leaves and kinda use those to wad everything together. And once we have a nice tight package, we can take a sharp knife and slice across this way, and then the other way, and we'll give that a little chop. And it may seem a little odd that we're chopping this before crushing it, but it only takes a couple seconds and really does work a lot better. So we will add in our herbs, and we will give that a crushing. And I'm not gonna stop the camera here, but at home, all that herb you see flying out, you're gonna wanna put back in. And I believe I mentioned earlier that the mortar and pestle is kinda key here, and it really is. While you can get something that looks similar to this with a food processor or a blender, you'll just never be able to achieve the same flavor. So in other words, if you wanna crush this, you have to crush this. But anyway, we're gonna crush those herbs into that garlic mixture until we have something pretty fine. I mean, we're not going for a total paste here, but basically something that looks like this, at which point we can add the last ingredient, the olive oil. But we're not gonna add all of it. We're just gonna start with a drizzle and we'll mix that in first before adding the rest. And the reason is when you're working with a mortar and pestle, the rule of thumb is the thicker the mixture, the easier it is to crush. So we'll just start with a little splash and we'll grind all that together for about a minute. And once it's been crushed to about this point, we can stop and add in the rest. And as you can see, I'm also switching to the freakishly small wooden spoon. And basically we're just adding in enough oil to achieve the proper thickness, which I think should be right about here. And believe it or not, that's it. Our garlic and herb marinade is done. So we'll set that aside while we go ahead and grab our shrimp. And what we have here is a couple pounds of peeled and deveined 1620s, which are the size I'm recommending here. And all 1620 means is that's how many come to a pound. So in my opinion, for this recipe, the bigger the shrimp, the better. And at this point, we wanna coat our shrimp with our herb mixture, but not all of it. We only wanna add in two thirds at this point. We must save a third to finish the dish with. So we just wanna transfer in about two thirds of that mixture. And then we'll grab a spoonula or something similar and give this a very, very thorough mixing. All right, shrimp are famous for their nooks and crannies. So you really do wanna make sure you get in there and get in there good until these are all perfectly coated. And then once that's set, what we'll do is we'll transfer that into a plastic bag because we wanna let these marinate in the fridge for at least a couple hours. And of course you wanna transfer this in carefully so you don't spill anything. Whoops. But anyway, we'll transfer that into a zip top bag and transfer that into the fridge for three hours. And what if you go for a little less or a little more? It'll probably be fine. And we will also wrap up that last third of that marinade because we're gonna need that for later. Of course, plastic wrap does not stick to wood, which is why I like to steal those little shower caps from hotels and motels and use that instead. But that's another video. So like I said, we're gonna let our shrimp marinate for about three hours, at which point those are ready to skewer. And I will be using the metal ones for these, but some soaked bamboo skewers will also work. And we will use the standard once through the small part, once through the big part method, which is pretty basic. I would be lying if I said skewering shrimp was hard. And I'm gonna do four of these because apparently I only have four skewers. But don't worry, I'll cook those later. So our shrimp have been skewered, and at this point they're ready to cook. And I highly recommend you do that on a very, very hot charcoal grill. What about gas grills? Not a big fan. 
But anything hot will work. And the reason I want a very, very hot fire is because I'm going for some serious caramelization. Oh, I've never met a grill mark I didn't like. So a lot of grilled shrimp recipes recommend medium heat, but that is not me. I want very intense heat, very close to the shrimp. But anyway, I cooked those for a few minutes per side until they were just barely cooked through and looking awesome, at which point we'll pull those off the grill. And if everything's gone according to plan, you should be looking at one of the most beautiful platters of grilled shrimp you've ever seen. And at this point, we're ready to serve, but wait. We have one last step to do. We have to take that third of the herb mixture we saved and use that to make a quick sauce to go over the top. So let's go ahead and transfer the rest of that mixture into a mixing bowl, to which we'll add some red pepper flakes. I'm using Aleppo pepper, but just red chili flakes will work. I'm also gonna give it a little pinch of cayenne. You know that's good for you. As well as some freshly squeezed lemon juice and one last drizzle of olive oil. Then we'll take a whisk and we'll give that a mix. And in just a few short seconds, you're gonna be looking at a very gorgeous and incredibly delicious sauce to finish our shrimp with. So let's go ahead and spoon that over our shrimp, which as you can see have been transferred to a more geometrically appropriate platter. And we will spoon that over. And seriously, how good does that look? And then we finish these off with a few wedges of lemon. And right as I did, the light from the setting sun started being filtered through our neighbor's windblown tree, which caused the light to flicker, which when it comes to photography is a huge problem. But when it comes to everything else, the opposite of that. So I just went with it. And instead of being annoyed, I decided to enjoy it. So I went in for the official taste. And these really were magnificent. Just such a perfect combination with that sweet caramelized smoky shrimp, that fresh aromatic brightness of the herb, and of course a big punch of garlic. And obviously if you want to use some different herbs, go ahead. So things like dill or tarragon would also be beautiful in this. But of course that's up to you. You are the peaches of your herbs. So use whatever you like. But anyway, that's it, grilled garlic and herb shrimp. So delicious, so simple, so easy. Especially if you have all those herbs growing for free in your backyard, all right? So I really do hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.